night on Batman. Due has been delayed a year. I'm going to break down on, well, some of the possible reasons and look in some of the conspiracies and obviously blame James Gunn. Nev Campbell is returning for Scream 7, but is receiving backlash because, yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine, the original story before it went over to the MCU. Rebel Moon, baby. Zack Snyder in that Empire Magazine interview talks about the criticism of Rebel Moon Part 1. Talk about that and so much more tonight on Film Junkie Live. We're okay. Us Batman fans are okay when it comes to the delay. We really are. There's, I mean, just let, let them take... Let, let them, you know, just uh, take, take, take your time. It's perfectly fine, you know. I mean, you love the first one so much that, you know, just... Jesus! Now you want to get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. Where hell is? Everybody, is everything working? Yes, or not? Apparently, that's not working. Ugh, why is this thing so glitchy? What's happening, everybody? Well, you could do that at least. Come on, you know you want to. There it is. Just took its time right there. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Film Junkie Live. It is Wednesday, of course, hump day on the 13th. It's Wednesday. You know what? It's Wine Wednesday. Cheers, everybody. You know, I used to drink wine on Mondays before you know and then i stopped doing that you know but then i was like you know what let's bring it back for wednesday so cheers everybody ah i've been on a wine kick re recently i must say i just i just have so there is all that all right hopefully you guys are doing good hopefully you guys this day is doing all right let's see what's going on here and the when it comes to the chat let's see we got uh Nathan right here because james gunn probably wants the movie to go his way that must be it He's like, you know what? I'm going to rewrite your Batman Part 2, Matt Reeves. No, Gunn's not touching the Batman trilogy. Really. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, you could explain that. But if you hate Gunn, you're just gonna, it's going to go one ear out the other. That's what's going to be happening. We got Gilmer right here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Let's see. I'd rather uh, a delay than rush a release date. There's no script. No cast. Makes sense to delay. So there you go. Get, you got that right there. We got Shane Baker. What is happening? Anybody um, here in the Film Junkie group getting hyped for get Ghostbusters next week? Yes. Well, obviously, you know I am. You know I'm totally getting hyped for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Cannot wait. Going to go see it. Not really anything coming out this week, which is fine. I actually am going to be watching something else. It's going to be uh, interesting uh, tomorrow. And uh, I'll figure all that out. But anyways, yeah. Ghostbusters next week. Cannot wait. What's going on, Mr. Patterson? Good to see you. Hey, there's Jose. What up, people? What up, Dave? Hope you are you're well. Gunn uh, wrote a whole movie and a, in a season, and Matt Reeves has done a thing. What a hack. Oh, how dare you, sir? How freaking dare you? It's all good. I, I, I dig the joke. I dig the joke. I dig the joke. Game City Savior. What has happened in Capcom Remake Power Stone 2? Interesting. Darkness under the the wind. We got uh, we got you here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, you know, I try. I try sometimes. I try. And we got Abel here. What is happening? And then of course, Mr. McKenzie, always uh, always helping out the pirate ship. Every little bit helps. Cheers, sir. I do have a drink this time. So, amen to you, man. <laughs> ah, always helping out that pirate ship. Every little bit helps, man. Every little bit helps. And then, of course, we got Eric right here with all the work. Yeah, right? Dave, I won't be able to uh, next two vodka streams. I'm going out with some friends, and the second I will uh, be at my best friend's baby shower. That's unforgivable, okay, Ryan? How dare you? You better cancel at least one of them. You can't miss two in a row. How dare you? Nah, it's all good, dude. Have a good time. Have a good time. You can watch it later, listen to it later. Always going to be readily available or just watch some clips from it or whatever. We got Braden right here. What is up? Uh, I have a question, though, Dave. I couldn't fit it in with the other questions on Twitter. Oh, okay. Well, we could figure that part out, I guess. <laughs> uh, be all good. So what's up, everyone? Caught alive. There you go. The Black Red. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, guys. 
Uh, of course, we're going to be talking about the delay. That I thought about doing a video about it yesterday, but I was like, nah, save it for the show. Save it for the show because, you know, got to have something to talk about, right? So I, I saved it for today to talk about the delay. I mean, obviously, there was, a, you know, it was like some things that were happening. And, you know, we're going to go over, there was a lot of things that, a lot of news that happened yesterday. And I was just kind of going like... What should I do with that? And I just went, I'll just save it for the stream because why not, you know, because I'm sitting here pumping out clips and all that stuff. So, and uh, so I thought, okay, I'll just save it for uh, today's stream. But yeah, we're going to break down the Batman and the reasons why and the conspiracy theories and all this stuff. And, you know, I'll give my two cents and the information that I've heard when it comes to the Batman being delayed. I mean, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, I think a lot of us didn't think it was going to be make that that date. But uh, we'll see. And then, of course, Scream 7, that whole thing, which Nev Campbell coming back. You guys know I'm not big on Scream. I've never been a big Scream fan. I liked the first, like, initial trilogy. But then when they, you know, again, it's like almost like when 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 franchises brand, you know, start adding more to the trilogy, I kind of just fall off. I'm, I mean, I might not even see. No, nah, I think I've seen them all. But anyway, I didn't see the last one. That's right. I have not seen the last one. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And then, of course, we will uh, talk about uh, the original story, original story of Deadpool 3 before it went over to the MCU. That got revealed. And then, of course, it's just it's something quick. And then, of course, more Rebel Moon talk. We talked about Rebel Moon on Monday and we saw that new image, of course, of Korra, Sofia Batella, And uh, we saw a new image. And then, of course, Zach talking about the criticism, the criticism, of course, the criticism. We got some new people in the bunch. We got Shane O right there. Good to see you. And of course, we got Cortez, Cortez Huntley right there as well. So good to see you guys. All right, let's start. Let's start going into the tweets. We'll start going into the tweets here. All right, don't need that. But yeah, up, 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 up. Yeah. Had to pull up that right there. All right, we got that. Make sure I got my notes here and seeing stuff. And, but yeah, we'll get to these tweets right here. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, and a lot of people, a lot of people are excited for this movie, and it just premiered at South by Southwest just recently. But we're talking about Monkey Man, Dev Patel, directing, starring, and just putting his all into it. And uh, this is pretty, uh, you know, this is great right here. I mean, obviously this happens a lot of film festivals, but he got a standing ovation for about two minutes. And I mean, you got to love that when you put your heart and soul because there is something that. He that was revealed when it came to Monkey Man and the fight scenes about Dev Patel that I'm going to talk about right after this. But yes, this was uh, this is what happened over the weekend or not over the weekend, but, you know, in the past couple of days. But, yeah, he got this treatment right here, which is great to see. It's always great to see this. <laughs> That's just, you just love to see that. You love to see that. I mean, he's the kid from what uh, million dollar what what was it called something million dollar it won like the best picture Academy Award. But it's just great to see that. But let me find it right here. Uh, I have to scroll up a little bit, but I remember retweeting it because it was revealed. That's right, right here. So this this was also revealed right here when it came to. I mean, take it with a great assault. Who knows if it, it it just got reported? I'm just reading words right here but apparently according to like the fight scenes and what he went through and he put his heart and soul into it says right here dave but uh, dev dave that's me dev patel broke his hand two toes tore his shoulder and got an eye infection throughout the filming of monkey man jesus talk about putting all putting your all into it Broke his hand, two toes, tore his shoulder, got a freaking eye infection when it came to filming all this. Now, hey, that could just be adding to it. Could just be some PR stuff. Yeah, sure. But at the same time, I'm looking at the critics and they're all raving about this movie. Pretty much that have seen the movie. They're raving about it. I can't wait. It looks absolutely fantastic. Slumdog Millionaire. There it is. I was like, millionaire, you know, yeah, that's right. But it's just crazy. How it's like, oh, yeah. And then here we are right now. And, you know, people slept on the, slept on the Green Knight, which was absolutely fantastic. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's turning into a freaking badass, man. 
So can't wait for that. All right, let me go back, scroll back down. But yeah, I saw a lot of good reviews when it came to when it came to all that. Uh, th yeah, this kind of hurts right here because, and but the, there's still hope, guys. There's still hope, no matter what. There's still hope. But yes, the, this was brought to the attention right here. Sony Pictures tweet from, two th <laughs> from 2008. Sony Pictures to release Spider-Man 4 on May 6th, 2011. <laughs> Ah, uh, not on this day. Yeah, on this that they 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 posted this on on the twelfth, and uh, you know it's it's kind of funny because, well, I mean we, we can't lose hope yet. We can't lose hope yet because you know there's always been word on the street that yet yeah, there's on the digital streets I guess you could say that yes there's a possibility. Ramey's talked about it. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church talked about that there's possibly a Spider-Man four that might be happening with Tobey Maguire, bringing that gang back together, and I'm like cool do that hey sony you need some winners because guess what after all the morbius and madam web you need some winners so why not just lean into your spider men and create something good when it comes to spider-man 4 and then also andrew garfield's amazing spider-man 3 you want them to i mean do you want them to return right in secret wars that you're sharing with marvel studios it's like why not you know, stop doing, like, these spinoffs. They're not really working. Venom's wrapping up, and we're going to be talking about that title. But Venom's wrapping up this year, so let's just lean into Toby and Andrew while you're sharing Tom. That sounds weird. You're sharing Tom with Marvel Studios, but come on. Let's just do that. Let's do it. Please. Come on. Come on. Uh, anyways. All right. I just thought I would uh, rant off a little bit about that. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I, I, it's just, it's funny because I'm, I'm rooting for Warner Brothers to get back to where they are, you know, but there's just been a lot of shit in the past few years. Let's face it, when it comes to Warner Brothers and one of the biggest mistakes, and I get it, it was more of the old regime than it is the regime now, but the whole thing about Christopher Nolan and them passing up on it, on him pitching Oppenheimer, and then look what happened. Big, one of the biggest movies of 2023, and then it cleaned house when it came to the Oscars, him winning two Oscars. But not only that, it's just, I mean, you just love to see it. You love to see it because, again, one of my all-time favorite directors, and you love to see this. Motherfucker got paid! Final! Oppenheimer paid a close to $100 million dollars. Whoa! You love to see it. Let me let me let me find it. Let me. <laughs> now what the hell do you do with all that money? Ah, well this uh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's what you could say. It's like maybe hopefully because Christopher Nolan loves film so much, hopefully some of that chunk of that will just actually go back into certain things when it comes to just filmmaking and, and helping people out, especially with the way that the business is right now. Hopefully that some of that could be there. But I mean, at the same time, it just, it just means that he, he's just able to do whatever the hell he wants. Whatever the hell he wants. Well, I'm going to say whatever the fuck he wants, you know, let's get a little, let's drop an F-bomb. Whatever the hell, whatever the fuck he wants to do, he could do. So good on Christopher Nolan for getting that bag. And members only stream after this. If you want to become a member, we do a members only stream right after this stream right here. Yeah, got a little tea when it comes to, when it comes to uh, Chrissy right here. So I want to be part of that. Talk about it. I'm already talked about it on the patreon a little bit so anyways okay what else we got here what else we got uh, let's see well that was pretty cool okay so somebody actually pointed this out which i thought was pretty sweet you know just kind of I, i'm not i don't think that keaton did it on purpose but i mean it, you know the what, what he was dressed you know when it came to uh somebody pointed this out it's like you know at the oscars they pointed out that you know he looked like adam west Batman right there and I was like oh yeah that's pretty sweet <laughs> that's pretty cool you know hey it's something it's something right there so oh boy oh boy guys I'm gonna have to take a drink <laughs> let me take a drink of wine when it comes to this 
Ah, take a little drink of wine because Marvel Shocker. That's right. We have a Marvel Shocker right here, and it has to do with, with of course, X-Men 97. That is coming out soon. It's coming out, what, next week maybe? Yeah. And obviously they released like a behind-the-scenes thing, a video today. In which looked great. Obviously, the trailer looked great, and you know, and it's totally just you know itching that nostalgia, which I know some people don't like. Always like the nostalgia part, but man, we got a shocker right here, folks. Marvel shocker: X Men '97 creator Bo DeMeo fired weeks before premiere. <laughs> what the hell? Jesus, how does that happen? The creator. In an unusual situation on the eve of the project's debut, the writer-producer who worked on Moon Knight and Blade will no longer be promoting the show or moving forward with future seasons. Jesus. Yeah. This is crazy. So, there's an article right here that just came out. No rhyme or reason. Nobody knows. What the hell happened there? I mean, again, times are bad and, you know, studios are just laying off people, but... The creator of all this before it comes out and apparently like he already wrote like season two jesus ah that just like that was a little bit of a shocker right there i mean let's face it i mean you don't expect to hear that before the damn thing is about to debut but then again they've canceled they've canceled i mean look at swamp thing they canceled the fucking show before it even debuted on on hbo max so jesus christ there i don't know what's going on with everything but man that is (sighs) <sighs> it's getting kind of weird out there, right, guys? I mean, geez, anybody? I mean, I haven't heard any follow-up to any of this, but sure. Uh, let's see. Streets are saying that he had uh, an OnlyFans and was flashing his dong. <laughs> Is that, I don't know. Is that real? Is that real, man? Uh, Is that real? Yeah. If that is real, that is hilarious. If that is real, that is hilarious. Had Oppenheimer been at WB, wouldn't have made nearly a billion since it would have had Barbie to write right off. They would have uh, been released with a wide gap. Oh, yeah, they definitely would have done that. So I think it actually it worked out for him. It definitely would have worked out for him. So, but yeah. Shocker. Marvel shocker. Marvel shocker. That's right. Okay. And we got something right here. This is, uh, we got two things. Two things when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, well, you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> when it comes to Nicolas Cage, that's my terrible Nicolas Cage impression, but Nicolas Cage has uh, actually had some comments when it comes to superheroes and then also National Treasure and maybe some comments about Disney. But let's talk about, let's, let's, let's hear about the, Superhero comments first, because obviously he loves the genre, and he's been in the genre, so will he return to the genre? He was asked at South by Southwest. So here it is right here. Last question outside of, outside of this. You're, I know you're in a comic book, so I know you're a big Superman fan. Any... He's got a tattoo on his wrist. Do you think he'll return to that genre anytime soon? In, as far as like working with DC or Marvel or anything like that? Uh, well, uh, would I return to the comic book genre? I guess never say never, right? But Hold I, I, the microphone up. You know, it's much has been made about that. My comic book collection just goes viral so quickly, exponentially, and I... I feel like it's in some ways eclipsed what I'm really reading, you know, like The Overcoat or uh, Herman Hess or, or, you know, you know, it's like I'm still stuck in uh, 12 years old with the NyQuil and the lemon cookies reading The Incredible Hulk number 72. I mean, I come on, I've grown up. Uh, You know, that's not who I am anymore, which isn't to say I don't appreciate it. I do. And I'll probably still be open to playing something, but it's not really on my mind. I think we should do not really on <laughs> it's not really on my mind. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's that's fine mm-hmm. as it shouldn't be. I mean, especially remember his comments about, you know, his whole thing when it came to the Flash. 
he kind of didn't like how they handled his uh, little cameo when it came to the Flash. So, you know, there's that. But he also said this. Let me scroll. It was in two different spots. This, uh, that one was from that one's from Deadline. This is from Screen Rant. But then he was asked about National Treasure Three, which you know I enjoyed the first two movies, especially the first one. I don't think I watched the second one as much. But National Treasure Three, this is his comment when it came to is that going to happen? He said, "If you want to find treasure, don't look at Disney. It's not there." <laughs> he flat out was just like, "Yeah." Disney sucks. Didn't they have that TV show or something like that? That uh, they had like a that a show on on Disney Plus or something that didn't go anywhere. It's like why would you? I don't know. It's like they didn't want to work with Nicolas Cage. But yeah, I just like how I love how blunt he was right there, and I'm glad that he is. Yeah, don't look at Disney. It's not there. Uh, yeah, say more stuff like that, people. Come on. So. No National Treasure 3? Well, maybe after this. Who knows? Maybe after these comments or something. And then, of course, I was just talking about Sony. Just talking about Sony and, of course, their Spider spinoff verse that has been happening. Now we got Venom 3. <laughs> Michael Jackson gonna sue somebody right here. Maybe. I don't know. But... Venom 3, we're kind of wondering what the title is going to be. And yes, apparently we have the title, and here is the title. Venom 3 is now titled Venom The Last Dance. I mean, I'm guessing I'm just somebody watched the Michael Jordan doc and was just, why not call it that? There's even someone on Twitter that actually called it that. It's supposed to be the last one. They're wrapping it up in a trilogy. Kind of sucks because it's like, okay, if they're going to expand the universe or any kind of universe, it'd be like, can we have Tom Hardy's Venom interact with Andrew Garfield if you're going to do that? The dude wants to fight an alien. Remember, he said that in No Way Home, but I'm like, can't we have some kind of interaction with Spider-Man? It's just like kind of sucks that we're going to get a third Venom with Tom Hardy, who's like, it's Tom frickin' Hardy, so why not have him interact with one of the Spider-Men? All he did was lick the screen of Tom Holland, which, you know, who doesn't do that? Okay. Um, but, yeah, it's just like, why not have him interact? But, yeah, The Last Dance. There it is. It works, I guess. It's just kind of funny, but, yeah. Good on that. Venom 3. That's what it's going to be called. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and speaking of Spider-Verse stuff, this is pretty cool right here. So we have a, there's a mural in L.A. Next time in a, I'm, a, I'm in L.A., I got to find this because this is, uh, this is pretty awesome right here. We got a mural in L.A. with every artist's name on it. That's right. So everybody who's worked on Across the Spider-Verse, everyone who did, their name is right there in that mural, and it looks absolutely beautiful. So cheers to that, man. Cheers to that. Can't wait for Beyond. Can't wait to see that continuation of the story. But that's just freaking beautiful right there. That's just freaking awesome. I love that. You know, you got you to gotta show like, hey, come on. So many artists work on that. I mean, again, I mean, I wish it won the Academy Award. But, you know, I get it. It's fine. It's, a, it's an interesting category. You know, the first one won, won the Academy Award. The second one didn't. It, perfectly fine. And then, of course, uh, at South by Southwest, um, the Fall Guy, the Fall Guy, Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, that one's getting a lot of praise. I mean, obviously, anytime we get a bunch of praise for these movies that come out of a film festival, you know, it's a different vibe. So there's always going to be like excitement. But I'm still looking forward to the movie. It's David Leitch, Ryan Gosling. I mean, that's he's like the hottest thing right now. Emily Blunt. It looks like a, a f -f -f fun movie. It just looks like a great movie and i like the whole stunt man aspect to it so i I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to the fall guy i definitely am Ugh. <laughs> okay all right it just seems like uh zachary levi might be getting typecast guys because well he's in a new movie i had no idea that he was going to be in this movie that's coming out on august 2nd and it was based on a book i don't ever i never read the book when i was a child or anything it's like a children's book but yeah a lot of people were making comments about this and again i like zachary levi but sometimes i just go huh poor guy harold and the purple crayon now if you look right here rj i don't know if he's actually in the uh in the chat rj you're right there but yeah 
uh, you know, it's uh, the, it's a four year old. It's a four year old that 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 does this. And then I look at this, I look at this uh, poster, and I just go, "What the? Is this a real movie? This is a real thing? It's gonna be in movie theaters, huh? It's not just like direct to okay." <laughs> I'm like, whoa, buddy. Yeah, but is he getting a little typecast? Because, yeah, four-year-old, supposed to be a four-year-old, and it's just like, oh, man. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be taking their liberties and changing and stuff like that. A lot of people are even saying that it reminds them of Green Lantern. But, uh, yeah, I saw that poster, and I went, well, and then I kind of looked into it, and I went, eh, you don't know about that. Now, this this one's better. That's 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 pretty cool. So everything everything he draws is about to get real. All right, that's pretty cool. But I'm just like, you're getting typecast here. Uh, Levi, I, 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 I like you. I like you, but, you know, maybe maybe get a better agent. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like, uh, what are we saying here? Harold and the Purple Crayon is about a baby drawing silly things and having adventures. Like, why is this a thing? I, yeah, it's just like, why is this a thing? It's like, why? Well, I know. That's what I'm kind of wondering, too. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's like, why is it a thing? Why is it a thing? But, you know, hey, you know what? Maybe it'll be good. <laughs> Who knows? And then we got Olivia Munn. Poor thing. Olivia Munn. We like Olivia Munn. She's been in the nerd com- community for a while. And she's very nice to look at, of course. And, uh, yeah, apparently uh, there's something that uh, she revealed right here, which is, like, pretty, like, oh, damn. Crazy. Olivia Munn reveals she was diagnosed with breast cancer back in February of 2023. I'm lucky we caught it with enough time that I had options. I want the same for any woman who might have to face this one day. Ask your doctor to calculate your breast cancer risk assessment score. So, yeah, talked about how she even said right here that, uh, you know, two months later was diagnosed with cancer because, yeah. It was just some things, mammogram, all that stuff. In the past 10 months, I've had four surgeries, so many days spent in bed I can't even count and have learned more about cancer, cancer treatment, and hormones than I than I ever could have imagined. Surprisingly, I've only cried twice. I guess I haven't felt like there was time to cry. My focus narrowed and tabled any emotions that I felt would interfere with my ability to stay clear-headed. Good on her. Good on her, and yes, everything should be checked. I mean, Jesus Christ, you know, get those mammograms, get that all checked out because it's a serious thing, and hopefully you catch it early. That's a good thing, but man, good on her. It should just reveal. I mean, she should be holding this secret for over ten, for over a year, over a year. So hopefully she, since they caught it at first, they treat that stuff. So, man, crazy. And then, oh boy, guys, and then, oh boy, guys, oh boy. Guess what we get tomorrow? Oh, we, we're getting a new trailer tomorrow. We're getting a new trailer, and that trailer is from The Crow. The Crow remake. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll do a reaction to it. I don't know. Haven't decided yet. I mean, it is Thursday, so... Or maybe I'll just talk... We'll just talk about it in the Vox stream on Friday, but... You guys already know that, you know, my... My opinion on the way that Mr. Skarsgård looks, I wasn't really digging it and just kind of wondering what's going on. But this right here, not too shabby. Whoa. Not too bad. All the blood and the slow motion and the logos and stuff like that. Okay. You have you have my attention. As Leo DiCaprio said in Django. You have my attention on that one. Give it a shot. Yeah, you know. We'll see if I I'll probably do a reaction to it. Why not? Yeah, if I have time. I should have time. And then, of course, yeah, we got the uh, behind-the-scenes uh, video. We have this behind-the-scenes video of uh, X-Men 97, which they talk about all that, bringing back all the voice actors and everything. That looks great. Oh, all right. And the last thing when it comes to the tweets. The plot thickens. Patty Jenkins. Patty Jenkins. Rogue Squadron. Back on the table? 
According to Collider, Patty Jenkins says she's back working on Star Wars Rogue Squadron. How? When? I mean, I want to see this movie. It sounded like it was going to be a great movie. They did a whole presentation of her on the rollerblades and doing all that and talk about her father and everything. It was, it was, it seemed like it was meant to be. And you know what? I, I like Patty Jenkins as a filmmaker. So I want to see some more of this. And it just sounded like it was like Top Gun, Top Gun Star Wars. I want to see this. And hopefully it is, but who knows? Because the way everything is right now. But she's just saying that. Maybe she's just putting it out there. Could be another PR thing. Who knows? And just trying to get put pressure on Disney and Lucasfilm, maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, that was a little bit of like today. It was like, whoa, Patty Jenkins? Yeah, she's flat out saying, I'm back, baby. All right? Let's hope it lasts. Let's hope it lasts. Who knows? But, yeah, that was the last tweet right there. That was the last tweet I wanted to go. Yeah, it just happened, but right right as I was about to uh, post the link, I'm like, wow. Okay, cool. Interesting. And no 1013. Got <laughs> yeah, there's not going to be a 1013, of course. There's not going to be a 1013. I'm going to guess it's because the Ray movie director got the boots. Yeah. I mean, they need something, right? I mean, I, I'm just looking for it. I'm just look. I, I, I just want... Can we just have... Can we just have this cool, like, X-Wing fighter movie? I I, I want to see it. I want to see it. But we'll see. Who knows if it's actually going to happen. All right. All right, let's get into the uh, the meat and potatoes of, um, of everything right here. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the main topic. Yeah, you definitely, I'm like... Where are you at? There it is. Sorry. There's that. Oh, turn that off. And then turn that off. Come on. There we go. All right. (sighs) The Batman Part 2. Delayed to October 2nd, 2026. Ah! Hurts. It hurts a little bit. Ah! It hurts. It does. I will say, but we all saw this coming, right? With Jeffrey Wright and everybody kind of just like talking about it. They haven't seen the script yet. We haven't heard anything from Matt Reeves. What is happening with the Batman Part 2? Kind of assumed that, yes, it wasn't going to reach the 2025 October release date. And it was like, okay, we got to push it to 2026. Okay, fine. So now, thinking about it, I went, okay, we are spoiled. (laughs) We are spoiled because obviously Batman part one came out in 2022. So it's been two years, but we are spoiled because my God, before when comic book movies came out, there was a gap. There was a gap where we didn't get it, you know, next year, the next year, the following year, or the, you know, there was a year in between. Now we're kind of spoiled because of everything that's been happening. Marvel and everything. Marvel spoiled us a little bit. So we're now it's like they try to rush these things out because if, if you actually think about it, you look at the Dark Knight trilogy, Christopher Nolan and the gaps in between those movies. It was three years between Batman Begins and it was five years, four years, sorry, four years between the Dark Knight I totally fucking fucked that up. Hold on. Let me say it again. It was three years between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. And then it was four years between The Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. So four years. Okay, cool. And then when you look at the track record when it comes to Matt Reeves and uh, his Apes movies, it was like a five, there was a four or five year gap when it came to his two Apes movies. So you, you can look at it like that. You can look at it like that. Not a bad way to look at it. It's like, okay, yeah, let him take his time. There's always that. Okay, that's perfect. That, that's the way I was like, okay, yeah, we're too spoiled. Let him do his thing. My hope is still that he's not only writing the Batman Part 2, but he's also writing the Batman Part 3. So he's going to complete his trilogy, and maybe they'll shoot it at the same time. So I'm just thinking, all right, let him take his time. It's perfectly fine. I'll be okay, even though like I'm like, damn it, we're not gonna get it next year. Now we gotta wait, wait two and a half years. We gotta wait two and a half years for this movie. 
But we get the penguin at least. We get the penguin at least this year. Take it easy, sweetheart. At least we get that. We might get some Batman in there too. It'll be Batman references, but at least we get that. At least we get that. So uh, let's see what else. All right. Now, also, when talking about this, obviously, talking about this, like what what is going on when it comes to this movie? And I know I get it. I can't I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I'm not worried about it. Of course, I'm worried about it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about it. I mean, how many times did did uh, Ben Affleck's Batman get delayed? get delayed, get delayed. And then of course it ended up not happening. And, you know, so obviously there's a worry there. There's a worry factor a little bit, but at the same time, I'm like, no, I think we'll be okay. Because I mean, I have this little graphic right here that was from DC film news. Ah, come on. Ah, oh, jeez, Stupid things not working. So there we go. So we got this graphic right here, and it is kind of nice because it's like, all right, take your time. Take your time. We get the Joker this year. We get Superman Legacy next year, and then we get the Batman Part 2 the following year. Okay. Take your time. Let these things, let these movies do their thing. We don't need four movies a year, right? We don't want that anymore. So I think that's actually kind of a good thing. Like, okay, we have it spaced out pretty well right there. So I remember like there was, eh, I don't really like the source, but I remember people were talking about like a certain, certain scooper type guy was like, oh, they want to like, the way that they want to do it is release it, you know, not so cluttered, not two movies, not three movies, not a bunch of movies in one year. So it's like, all right, this year we have the Joker, we have Joker 2. That's coming out this year, Elseworlds. The next year, it's Superman Legacy and possibly maybe another new DCU movie. Who knows if Supergirl is going to end up making that? Probably not, because that would already have to like have to be uh, uh, well, probably about to shoot. But it's like okay, so DCU stuff, to 2025, and then 2026 can be more Elseworld stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's the way to do it. Uh, cause obviously a lot of people are just going to be like, yeah, it's James Gunn. He's the one that's doing this. He's the one that, and he was actually the only one that actually confirmed this. And a lot of people are going like, where's Matt Reeves, Matt Reeves, where are you at? How, why haven't you commented about it? And you know, to be honest, I was like, I was hoping since it's a day later, I was like, yeah, why hasn't Matt Reeves said anything now when it comes to Twitter, he's not on Twitter that much or any social media, really the last tweet that he sent off was like back in December. So he hasn't been, he doesn't really talk about anything. James Gunn is on social media all the fucking time. Let's face it. He always is on social media. So he confirmed it and he said, yeah, that's true, but I think we'll be okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to start freaking out yet. I mean, yes. Do I have concerns? Sure. And then of course you got to think about Warner brothers and their money. They're probably going to be like, okay, Hey, we need, if we have some things come out and hopefully like Superman legacy is a success and then, you know, so everything's going to be okay. I don't know. There's always a money issue when it comes to all these movies. And of course, that's why I'm like, oh yeah, look at the spread. Look at how they're spaced out. They're not going to try to cram. I mean, Jesus Christ, 2023, they had three movies in 2023. Now it's like, all right, let's just have a movie a year right now. And that's the way it used to, it, well, it didn't even used to be like that, but it used to be like, I mean, Jesus, like 1989 to 1992 was Batman Returns. So you're talking, I mean, right there, you got three years right there. You got, you have to have some gaps into that. So I'm trying to be glasses half full here, guys. But yes, part of me is a little worried. Part of me is a little worried. And you got to remember though, remember Matt Reeves, Matt Reeves threatened to walk if he wasn't going to get the version of Batman that he wanted. Remember? Remember all that? Where, like, Matt Reeves ends negotiations or whatever. He walks. Because, hey, remember that. He, he didn't want to do a Batfleck movie. He read that script and was like, that's great, but I want to do my own thing. You know? What does that sound like? You know, it's kind of funny because anytime when you have, like, of course, the people that hate James Gunn and they want to just be like, oh, it's James Gunn, it's James Gunn. And, you know, how dare he treat Matt Reeves like that? It's like, okay, did you guys forget that Matt Reeves didn't want to do Batflex? Batman? Remember that? Remember he didn't want to do that and he threatened to walk. <laughs> but then Ben Affleck was not in any, any uh, kind of condition to do his Batman movie. 
That's why I still like when I see the hashtag make the bat flick movie, I'm like, that's long gone. I'm like Ben is not going back to that. And that was a very difficult time for him. You get uh, some of these. I always say that some of these uh, hashtags that I see like sell the Snyder version. It's all selfish stuff because it's like, we want to see these movies. We want, you know, and that, and like, that requires a lot of people to come back to do these things that they probably don't want to do anymore, you know, but there's the people that want to still do it. You know, hopefully Matt Reeves still wants to do it and hopefully we'll get that Batman part two. But again, I'm just, I'm fingers crossed that, that it's going to be part two and part three. That's what I can only hope for. That's what I'm really hoping for when it comes to all this. Huh. That's what, that's all I can hope for. That's really all I can hope for. How are you guys feeling about it? I think that's all the things. Yeah. The way that they were doing. Uh, what's going on, Jason? Fear Jason's here. Good to see you. The penguin better be good. I'm pretty sure the penguin is going to be pretty damn good. Robert Pattinson and me are going to be 40. I know, right? He's going to be, yeah, but he looks younger than you. <laughs> Just kidding. Ah. Uh, Film Tracker website, my review. Uh, Gun is scared to announce it. I, I just, no. I know, like I said, there's people out there, and sadly there are people out there that that have YouTube channels that just want to hate every little thing. He's scared to announce it. I mean, again, Matt Reeves could walk. Who knows? But I don't think Gun is scared to announce it. Yeah, at least not right now. It's just that's pretty funny right there, um, Dave, because that guy. Oh, yeah, it's because of Batman Gate. That's what it is. It's because of Batman Gate. They're trying to handle that. But, yeah, I think the uh, I think the Penguin series is actually. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to hopefully help it a little bit. Hopefully. But but anyways, that's just my breakdown of the whole thing. Of course, there's the conspiracies and everything. But, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's. It's such a weird thing. It's such a weird thing because the Batman came out of that bridge. Like I told you guys about that bridge, that bridge to, you know, the old, the old regime to DC studios. It was, you know, when shit was a mess and they were built and then this bridge had to like go to DC studios. It's like Matt Reeves is on that bridge, sadly, and it's like he was doing his own thing. But then at the same time, what, would, what do we talk about on Monday? That James Gunn was supposed to do his own Superman script that wasn't going to be tied to the bigger picture because they thought, oh, maybe we're going to have Dwayne Johnson and Black Adam and we're going to build to that. And then that ended up not doing so well. So then they're like, nope, James, we need to expand a different universe. It's all just crazy. Yeah. And again, that was Michael DeLuca, who, of course, was watching all that. I know everybody was like, Michael DeLuca doesn't like James Gunn. He loves Zach. No, I think he likes them both. And he's just kind of looking at what's going to make the money kind of thing. So, yeah, you know how it is. OK. <sighs> all right, let's go on to the next topic, because this one's also controversial. Nev Campbell, Scream 7. So this was a little bit of a shocker right here because, you know, with everything that happened with Melissa and uh, what's-her-name, too, also walking, I mean, they were building up this uh, whole new kind of like, okay, we don't have Nev Campbell anymore. She's not going to be returning to the franchise. So, hey, we're going to build up these new characters. And it seemed like that's what they were doing, kind of building up this new trilogy with these new characters that have a connection to the original storyline. But then, of course, when it came to certain things that were expressed on social media from Melissa and it got her kind of canceled. And then, of course, the original director, I forgot who it was, but... They put the kibosh on it, and everything looked like he was uh, just going to be in shambles, especially after Nev Campbell came out and said, like, yeah, I'm not going to be joining any more movies when it comes to Scream because they are not offering me a lot of money. They're not offering me the money that I think I deserve. And I, my whole thing about that was, well, I was like, all right, well, we don't know how much she was actually supposed to be in the movies, so I'm kind of wondering about that. She asked it too much. Not, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Because, you know, sometimes you got to think about screen time. Because if, if these new young actors are, are on the screen way more than you, it just kind of seems like, well, you know, maybe even though you're the face of the franchise, maybe not. But then now we got 
Nev Campbell coming back. And you better believe that they were like going, hey, we need to clear this up right here. And here's what she posted. Untitled Scream 7. I think it's just going to be called Scream 7, right? Why would they actually put Untitled right there? It's not like they've been changing the titles or anything like that. Anyways, I'm nitpicking. But yes, right here, Kevin Williamson, he's coming back. He's directing. She posted this right here. And then, of course, posted a caption talking about all this. Hi, all. I'm so excited to announce this news. Sydney Prescott is coming back. It's always been such a blast and in honor to uh, get to play Sydney in the Scream movies, my appreciation for these films and for what they have meant to me have never waned. I'm very happy and proud to say I've been asked in the most respectful way to bring Sydney back to the screen, and I couldn't be more thrilled. Well, I actually could. While I've been so incredibly uh, lucky to make these films with both a master of horror, Wes Craven, and the wonderfully talented Matt and Tyler team, I've dreamt for many years of how amazing it would be to make one of these movies with Kevin Williamson at the helm. And now it's happening. Kevin Williamson is going to direct Scream 7. This was his baby, and it's his brilliant mind that dreamt up this world. Kevin is not just an inspiration as an artist, but has been a dear friend for many years. To the amazing Scream fans, I hope you are as excited as I am. See you on set, Kevin Williamson. She doesn't stand with Melissa? How dare she? Of course she doesn't stand with Melissa because if they backed up a dump truck full of fucking money, probably twice or five times what she asked for originally, she ain't gonna stand for anybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, I mean she, she, does she ever get political? Does Nev Campbell ever get political? Of course she doesn't. I don't see, I've never seen like political takes except for, you know, when it came to, I mean, I guess you could say it was kind of political when she was talking about they weren't offering her enough money when it came to coming back and stuff like that. And she was like, you know, but then at the same time, it's like, yeah, I mean, she, she saw her value. Of course. Yeah. She saw the value. Why not? But then of course, how many people, how many people, how many Scream fans were going to boycott this movie? And I've seen the backlash. They are not. They are frowning on Nev Campbell, which they should be, <laughs> to be honest, because it doesn't look kind of, it, does, it doesn't look good. When you made a stink about the pay and then Melissa gets fired because of her comments about something that's super political right now, and then you're just going to come back and announce it like that. I mean, obviously, this is the studio just kind of going like, how do, we, how do we get back on the good graces of the fans? This is how you do it. And then it kind of makes you wonder just how many fans are going to just like go, I, 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 I didn't post anything about, uh, no, no, I was completely supportive. I, I, I still, um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm going to buy a ticket. See, that's what I wonder. It's like how many of these fans that were already like boycott now that are like, oh, uh, watch, they, watch the next one, the next thing, somehow they're going to, Somehow they're going to bring back Jamie Kennedy and Matthew Litter. They're going to try to get the, the original cast somehow to come back. There's going to be some way that they're going to bring more that, you know, that died already. Somehow they're going to somehow bring those characters back. And it's going to be even more. It's going to be more difficult for these uh, boycott Scream, Scream fans that are going to be like, <laughs> Uh, I can't boycott this now. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a somehow and they'll bring Melissa and uh, what's her name back? Uh, Jenna Ortega. Jenna. I can't even remember Melissa's last name. That's why I'm not saying it. So I'm like, what's her last name again? Shit. Barrara. Right? There we go. Uh, so, yeah. This was just kind of funny. But, hey. Again, I, I, I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm not a diehard Scream fan. So, I don't really care that much and i'm just like cool she's coming back you know so hey cheers to her and kevin williamson you know should be interesting what's going on tet good to see you but yeah there you go so there was that oh not that okay Deadpool and Wolverine. We all cannot wait for this. Well, maybe not we all, you know, but a lot of us can't wait for Deadpool and Wolverine to come out. 
But we got to remember that this was already in the works before Fox and Marvel Studios were, you know, doing their whole deal thing. So we got to remember that this was always been in the works and you better believe that the story that we're actually going to be seeing in Deadpool and Wolverine is not the story that was originally intended. And now we actually have confirmation of that. If I can find it. Oh, I probably didn't. Did I not pull? I thought I pulled that. Ah, oh, where's it at? I thought I had it. Oh, right here? No. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I thought I had it up. That's what she said. <laughs> or that's what he said. Hold on. Let me pull up this little interview right here. It's nothing too major. Come on. Where are we? All right, here we go. And this is, of course, from um, Screen Rant. And uh, we got, uh, let's see. Is that my, yeah. All right, so here we go right here. So if you want to know what the original story was, here it is right here. I didn't even know it was coming. They are not telling me anything, which is good because honestly, actually, to bring it back to Russian, on our first date, I recapped the plot of Deadpool 3, which I wasn't supposed to. This was a Fox version, which didn't get made because the studio got sold or whatever. We just met and I was desperate to impress him. And I just blurted the entire thing. I told him Hugh Jackman was going to... This is like years before. So all to say, I didn't get a script this time. Thank God. I have nothing. They didn't even tell me the trailer was coming out. I got to watch it when yeah. it came out and I'm excited to be a small part of it. Are you allowed to say what the version that didn't get made was? Yes, I think it's online a little bit, so maybe I can, but it was going to be originally a road trip movie where Deadpool tries to save Christmas. So we all go to the North Pole. <laughs> I... Okay, I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, I'm glad where it's at right now, but, you know, Mr. Kassan right here blurting it out i guess he's like the tom holland of the deadpool universe right there but uh you know so there you go deadpool was going to save christmas road trip movie everybody heading up to the north pole it could have worked it could have worked but it just seems like everybody in there everybody's doing a, a santa claus movie right now i mean they just announced they just announced an alan richson and arnold schwarzenegger movie that's going to be about santa claus and i think uh, you know there's just been a lot of santa claus types of movies you know, we got The Rock and Chris Evans with their Santa Claus movie. So I'm actually glad that this is not happening. <laughs> this is actually, you know, I mean, not, it, it, Deadpool and Wolverine is just going to be absolutely insane. It's just going to be absolutely insane. So glad that this is actually not it. And we're going to get the movie out there now. Yeah. <clears throat> How are we feeling about what he had to say? How many DC jokes we... Oh, yeah, there's going to be some... DC jokes. Well, apparently, according to him, too, there's just going to be a lot of Kevin Feige jokes. He said that as well. So I'm like, I'm there for that. Give me all the Kevin Feige jokes. You have to make Kevin Feige jokes. And I'm sure Kevin Feige was perfectly fine with it, which is great. But yeah, he said there's a lot of that. And he's also said that there's a lot of people that are like showing up. Hopefully Ryan Gosling and just Ken performance gets him in a boy band. It gets him in boy What? All right. <laughs> Still, uh, I still have a feeling that Deadpool supporting cast will only be in that birthday scene before Wade gets. But yeah, you might. That, you, you might be correct on that one. Seems like there's way too much that's happening in that movie. Where yeah, you might be right. Where they might just be in that. Well, yeah, which does kind of suck. It's like I oh, don't want to see more of them. So. Rebel Moon, baby. So on Monday. We talked about the new Empire magazine. We got the new image of, of course, Korra for Rebel Moon Part 2, the Scar Giver, showing her in action, looking pretty damn badass. And then, of course, Zack Snyder and his quotes talking about how Part 2 is definitely a full-on war movie. There's going to be a lot more action, which obviously those beautiful images of war that happened in the first one. I can't wait for more of those. I think that's still my favorite shot in the first one is that war sequence, just that 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 big huge shot of just all that. And then of course talked about this it's an emotional roller coaster. We're going to find out some more backstory when it comes to the characters. That's all going to be just awesome and fine and dandy. But now we have Zach talking about eh, the criticism that Rebel Moon Part 1 that we all saw and critics and even fans gave that he uh, you know that he commented about. And let's see right here. Okay. Ah, why do you only work every now and again? I don't know why. 
Zack Snyder responds to Rebel Moon Backlash. My movies are very polarizing. Exclusive. And he's not wrong. I mean, they are pretty polarizing, right? I don't really have a rebuttal to the reviews. For whatever re reason, the reaction to my movies is very polarizing, and it always has been. The movie, it doesn't seem like there's that much in it that would warrant such visceral responses. Eh, so that's pretty much the quote right there. He even said that on Rogan a little bit too. Is like, you know, it's like sometimes like people, and, and this happens with everybody. I mean, this is currently happening, of course, with James Gunn. It's like no matter what, it's just like fans just flat out hate a person. They just see them and they seethe, you know, smoke starts coming out of their ears. They're grinding their teeth. Their eyes are turning red. No matter what this artist puts out, they've never met him, never talked to him, don't even listen to him. They just hate him. They just hate him. You know, it's a weird thing that's happened in fandom. And we've defended the shit out of that when it came to when it came to all the Snyder stuff. And now we're seeing it again. We're like people just flat out just hate James Gunn. It's like everything about him, whatever he does, hate him. But yeah, he doesn't have enough rebuttal. I, I hate it that like interviewers are actually talking about that. But it is. But again, like like as always, it's going to be interesting to see the reaction to the R-rated cuts of the movie because you better believe that his haters are going to watch the R-rated cuts and probably still hate them but you never know there could be some people that turn around when it comes to Rebel Moon and with those director's cuts but you know well, we, we're not going to find out for another few months sadly but yeah it's it's crazy I just don't I, I don't I've never looked at a director or a, an actor and just be like, eh, everything you do, everything, every time you talk, I, eh, I hate you. Just have so much hate for somebody where I want them to fail or something. I just, I, I've never felt that about, I'm like, no, I mean, okay. I just, I don't like, I don't like that guy. I don't like his films or I don't like his acting. I don't like, sure. And then I'm just like, I'm just not going to really pay attention to that. It's like, okay, but I decided it's not like I'm sitting there going, I hope he fails. I hope he, you know, gets hit by a, but I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just so very, it's very strange. It's very strange, but you know, that's the way, that's the way Phantom is right now in this current state. What can he do, right? <sighs> Toxic fans, you yeah. know. They're still asking the actors about the Marvels, folks. Move on. And so, yeah, exactly. Gotta get some sleep. Good to see you, Shane. Thanks for coming. They hate he made Superman kill, Batman kill. Yeah, they hate that too. It's all crazy. But, you know, what can he do? What can he do? Just try to ignore it. Just do your best to ignore it. All right, got a couple Twitter questions right here I'll get to you right now. And uh, then, of course, we'll do the uh, the members-only stream after this. You know, you guys can pick my brain. Like I said, I do have a little tea. I do have a little tea when it comes to, uh, when it comes to a uh, certain something, you know, certain thing, certain director. I'll talk about it a little bit, and then, of course, you, you guys can ask more questions. All right, here we go. Eric, honestly, all the criticisms of Rebel Moon sends me uh, a lot of deja vu here, Dave. I strongly suspect that the R-rated versions will get much better reviews, of course. Frankly, it's just uh, it just underlines that Zach's films are the best, let alone, uh, let alone, yeah. Will anyone actually prefer the PG-13 versions? Yeah, there's always going to be people that are going to prefer the, the PG-13 versions. 100%. Mr. Nobody, hey Dave, I'm not worried about Bat Batman 2. I think it's delayed because Gunn is probably trying to keep his movie slate and organized. Besides, we all know Batman 2 will come out before Blade. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Maybe Batman is delayed because it could enter into Gunn's universe, unlikely, but maybe. Hmm, that's an interesting point. Devon Wooter, hey Dave, I'm really sick and tired of people are blaming James Gunn for the Batman Part 2 being delayed. And why did James Gunn uh, cast the villain for Superman? And I forgot to tell you there a report last week that Henry Cavill 
could play Cyclops. Will he take it? No, uh, there's just a rumor that he plays Cyclops. That's all. People were just fan casting him for Cyclops. There's no, you know, there's no uh, real report. I even put that in a clip along, uh, like a few weeks ago. I had a clip of, about that talking about Cyclops. But uh, yeah, uh, Superman villain. I, I think that's that's kept under wraps. To be honest, Darkness Under the Wind. Dave, question number one: With the Batman two, uh, with Batman Part two delayed into 2026, would it be wise to have something in that universe in the meantime for 2025, or just have Superman kick off the DCU along with? Yeah, I think that's what they're thinking. To be honest, there's nothing. There's nothing that they have. Except for the penguin, that maybe the penguin will get pushed to, to 2025. You never know. Question number two: When Deadpool and Wolverine hits a billion, do you see the returning momentum for the MCU not going away with all of the good stuff coming from the set? Yeah, I can actually see that a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I can actually see the that it, it creates some momentum and just kind of show like, okay, yeah, when it when when it talks about doing more adult movies adult content when it comes to marvel studios yes that's going to be a huge kind of a wake-up call and i'm not saying that every movie is going to turn r-rated but yeah it's gonna it's gonna shine the light of like hey you should have variety variety of content and take your time and make sure that i saw another thing too like another rumor that said yeah they they ain't gonna do ant-man 4 they're not gonna do captain marvel 3 yeah because both of those just didn't they, they were half cooked i guess you could say and yeah, it's all crazy. But speaking of Henry Cavill, there's a thing that was actually showing up today too, because you know, talking about the whole thing that he was he might be playing Cyclops, there was actually a bullshit, of course, rumor that comes from giant freaking robot, which I don't know why people still trust that, and I don't even know why they have over a hundred thousand followers on Twitter. Elon Musk, can you check that? I think most of those are bots. But yeah, they said that. Henry Cavill is going to show up in Deadpool, Deadpool and Wolverine as a Wolverine variant. Now, if that actually happens, I will totally eat crow and laugh my ass off. But no, I don't think that's going to happen. I think if they signed Henry Cavill on for the MCU, he would play a pretty significant role. That's going to be the future. That's going to be multiple movies. It's not going to just be some gag Wolverine variant. But again, if that happened, I would laugh my ass off. <laughs> uh, it, would, it would be crazy if that actually happened. But I don't think that's actually going to happen. Again, it's a giant freaking robot. They, they, they freaking, yeah, they fucking suck. They suck. They suck. All right, guys, time to wrap up uh, today's show. Like I said, if you want to join the members-only stream that's going to be happening after this and pick my brain a little bit more, become a member, join the family. And members, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Just look for it on your feed. Uh, everybody else, uh, I'll either see you tomorrow on the DC Fanimated stream with Scott, or I'll see you guys on Friday, um, which will be fun. And uh, yeah, yeah, guys, uh, follow me on all the sock mids. If you want to support the channel too on the uh, Patreon, go ahead and do that. Uh, members, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Everybody else, I'll see you later. Bye bye.